Hello everyone, I am Disha Rathore from Brainovision Solution India Private Limited. Today, I am going to tell you about design thinking. By the end of this video, you will be knowing what is design thinking, why it is called design thinking, who started and why it is so important, who can use design thinking and what are its five stages of design thinking. How to introduce design thinking in your organization and finally we will see some types of problems in design thinking. So let's go. What is design thinking? Design thinking is a process for creative problem solving. Design thinking has a human centered core. It encourages organizations to focus on the people they are creating for, which leads to better products, services and internal processes. Why is it called design thinking? Design thinking is created not only because Tim Brown coined the word that became a buzzword. There is a logical reason to it. Design thinking is created because big corporation lacks the ability to be creative and on extreme cases aren't able to create new products and services that meet unmet needs of the customers. Who started design thinking? Rolf Fast expanded on McKim's work at Stanford University in the 1980s and 1990s, teaching design thinking as a method of creative action. Design thinking was adapted for business purposes by fast Stanford colleague David M. Kenley, who founded the design consultancy IDEO in 1991. Why is design thinking so important? Design thinking is a proven and repeatable problem-solving protocol that any business or profession can employ to achieve big results. Design thinking combines creative and critical thinking that allows information and ideas to be organized, decisions to be made, situations to be improved and knowledge to be gained. Who can use design thinking? Design thinking is a non-linear, iterative process that teams use to understand users, challenges assumptions, redefine problems and create innovative solutions to prototype and test. Stages of Design Thinking The five stages of design thinking are Empathize, Define, Ideate, Prototype, Test. In Empathize, we need to research users' needs. In Define, we need to state users' needs and problems. In Ideate, we need to challenge assumptions and create ideas. In Prototype, we need to start to create solutions. In test, we need to try our solutions out. How to introduce design thinking into your organization? Firstly, start small. Second, identify early adopters and evangelists. Third, avoid silos by department or team. Fourth, understand that design thinking is a fluid process. Fifth, identify how you will measure success. Now let us see types of problems in design thinking. Regardless of who you are and what your background is, you have to solve many problems daily. So it's highly beneficial for you to know what kind of problems you're dealing with. In design thinking, we focus on the nature of the problem a lot and it matters knowing the nature of the problem sets our expectation and allows us to manage our efforts. For example, if you're dealing with a wicked problem, it's not possible to find a solution right away. You need months of research, prototyping, testing and iteration. Then let us break down the typical problems you deal with in an innovation project. There are three types of problem in design thinking. They are simple problems, ill-defined problems, wicked problems. Before going to the above problem, let's see what's a problem. A problem exists when there is an undesirable situation you want to resolve but no solutions are readily apparent. Each is triggered by a cause and a desirable outcome is being pursued by solving it. To solve it, you use a solution out of the pool of possible solutions. Sometimes you have to use a combination of solutions to deal with more complex problems. You can think of the solution as a pathway that takes from an undesirable situation to an alternative and improved one. Now, let's discuss about the types of problems in design thinking. The first one is simple problems. A simple problem is clear in terms of understanding of the situation. The cause and desirable outcomes 
are clear as well as different pathways to solving it. Let's see an example of simple problem. A community and the expectations of us are growing. In order to serve them properly, we need a reliable communication channel. Problem or the undesirable situation here is the lack of communication with the community. There are a number of solutions out there like MailChimp that helps you to just do that. And the desirable outcome is when you can regularly broadcast your messages to your community. The second one is ill-defined problem. Ill-defined problem is an undesirable situation that's unclear what exactly it causes. There are several potential causes, desirable outcomes and solutions. Let's see an example of ill-defined problem. We know that the number of orders has increasingly decreased in the past few months. This is an undesirable situation. We realize the traffic to the online shop has decreased drastically as well. Instantly, we think of launching an aggressive marketing campaign and pour more traffic into the website. However, the cause of the decrease in traffic may be a seasonal or temporal. On the other hand, by looking further into the analytics, we realize the bounce rate of the online shop is extremely high and only 0.5% of those who don't bounce make a purchase. Poor UX of the online shop may be another candidate for the cause of the problem. The third one is WIC problems. WIC problem is a vague undesirable situation about which we have some knowledge and some guesses about the causes and potential solutions. Let's take an example of WIC problem. That is climatic change is also an undesirable situation. The climate is changing rapidly beyond the capacity to control it. The causes, it can be many, some of which have been proven and some have not. Which problems are systematic problems? Climatic change is the biggest systematic problem and contains several subsystems which each cause serious undesirable situations. For example, poverty is one of the main drivers of climatic change. When people are poor, they are careless about the quantity of consumption and often it's the cheaper product that yield more negative environmental impacts on the planet. Before I end this video, I would like to share a few words about a company that is Brainovision Solutions India Private Limited is one of the leading organization in the area of software development and also education technology where it trained 3000 plus students through workshops, hackathons, boot camps and internships. Isn't it fascinating? Yeah, it is. So that's all in this today's video. Thank you and have a good day.